Welcome back to bilingual e lectures for diploma students. Uh, it is lesson 3, unit 5 on steel structures. We will continue the uh, design of uh, tension members, and this is an example for a plate to find uh, the design tensile strength of this. The cross sectional dimensions are given 120 by 8 mm, and which is connected by a gazette plate uh, by its uh, ends for a length of 110 mm and the material property are given, mechanical property of the material are given. We are asked to find out the design tensile strength of the plate and this is the gazette plate and this is the plate, yeah this one is a gazette plate and this is the plate uh, um, under tension and the cross sectional dimensions of the plate is given as 100 mm, 120 mm by 8 mm and this is the length of connection and in this exercise the length of connection is from this point to this point only at the top and bottom that is only in the shearing plane not in the uh, tension plane. So, by substituting the relevant uh, values we are going to get the value of uh, design tensile strength. So, first one is the design tensile strength due to yielding of grass area and the second one is rupture of net area and the block shear and this is the strength for the given plates against yielding of gross section 357.81 kilo Newton and this is the strength against rupture of critical section and T d n is equal to 0 0.9 a n into F u by gamma m 1. So, that is worked out to be 373.248 kilo Newton and the last one design strength due to block shear T d b and uh, as shown here this plate is subjected only to the yielding of shear plane as well as fracture of shear plane. There is no tension plane here because there is no welding shown in the exercise. So, we will calculate accordingly. So, the design tensile strength of the given plate against block shear T d b uh, considering the shear as yielding or shear plane yielding and T d b is found to be 378.74 kilo Newton and the same plane under fracture that is under tension it works out to be 395.07 kilo Newton and the lesser one is the design tensile strength of the given plate. So, that comes around 357.81 kilo Newton it is a simple exercise of course and uh, a similar type of problem on angle section which is also an unequal angle section of size 150 by 115 by 8 mm which is connected by means of a gazette plate on its longer leg by fillet wells and it is uh, worked out here for the use of uh, students and viewers and uh, design tensile strength of the given angle against uh, grass yielding, grass area yielding is 467.7 and against uh, block shear, I am sorry against rupture of critical section it is found to be 516.34 and uh, I think uh, the connection I have not worked out. So, the least one is 467.7 kilo Newton for the given exercise. So, we will take the example of uh, 5.1.7 this is a real design problem then that means design means we have to select a suitable section to take care of this load that is tensile force of 250 kilo Newton and the mechanical properties of the material is given here and these are all the data given. And first step is to assume the design stress, permissible design stress for the member. This is assumed as 0 0.9 times of Fy or 0 0.6 times of Fu. Here it is assumed as 0 0.9 times of Fy. So, therefore, the permissible design stress is found to be 225 Newton per millimeter square. And we are given in the problem that total characteristic load, characteristic load is given as uh, 250 kilo Newton we multiply that by the partial safety factor for load 1.5. So, we will end up with the total design load. So, total design load is design tensile load is 375 kilo Newton the assumed permiss permissible design stress is found to be 225 Newton per millimeter square. From these two parameters we are going to calculate the approximate gross area of the member required and that is equal to the total design load 
in terms of Newton that is why I have multiplied this by 1000 total design load divided by the permissible design stress. So, load divided by stress will give you the area it is basic definition from the definition stress is equal to load by area. So, area is equal to load by stress. So, gross area required as a is equal to 375 this is in terms of kilo Newton multiply that by the 1000 will give you Newton and this is the permissible assumed permissible design stress. So, the approximate grass area of the member is found to be 1666.67 millimeter square. With this approximate area we refer the steel table and select ISA 125 Indian standard angle 125 by 95 by 8 and the grass area of the selected angle or the trial section is found to be 1698 millimeter square. Now, with this angle we have to perform the analysis procedure then that means we have to calculate the design strength due to yielding of grass area TDG then design strength due to rupture of critical section TDN as well as design strength due to block shear. Since the connection of course, we have assumed that one approximate area of course, we have selected this member ISA 125 by 95 by 8 mm and the design strength of the trial section uh, selected section due to yielding of grass area if you substitute the relevant values this is the area of that angle and this is a yield stress and this is a partial safety factor for the material under yield. So, this is found to be 385.91 kilo Newton and second one is design strength due to this is mistakenly typed here I mean step step 3 design strength due to rupture of critical section TDN and uh, this is the area of connected leg net area of connected leg net area of connected leg short leg is and of course, the sketch shows the longer leg connected of course, it should have been like this this should be have been 95 and this should have been 125 I should change this one a small correction in the sketch of course. So, short leg is when the short leg is connected net area of the connected leg is found to be 728 millimeter square and gross area the outstanding leg is 968 and we can assume the length of n connection as a length of the longer leg equal to length of the longer leg. So, that is 120 mm and by substituting the relevant values the design tensile strength of the selected angle against rupture of critical section is found to be 357.91 kilo Newton. And if the same angle is connected on the longer leg then these are the calculations that will give you the uh, section design tensile strength of the given section against rupture of critical section right. So, if the longer leg is connected the value is found to be around 447.9 kilo Newton. So, the least is 385.91 kilo Newton and the design tensile load is given in the problem as 375 kilo Newton this is the design tensile load given in the problem and this is the design tensile strength of the member we have arrived at. So, since the design tensile strength of the given member or selected member is greater than the design tensile load the section selected is ok it is safe and therefore, we can provide a section ISA 125 by 95 by 8 mm and similar way and it has been worked out one similar problem on uh, design area single unequal angle tension member to carry a tensile force and it is also a similar type of problem the same procedure is to be followed. The point to remember in the design of tension member is this initially you have to assume the permissible design strength of the member as 0.9 times of Fy or 0.6 times of Fu from this value and the total design load you get the approximate area required you select the suitable section from the handbook then you check whether the section selected is having that much of tensile load carrying capacity that is all. So, these are all the steps to be followed for the design of tension member when you use it as a single angle member. And this is the uh, design for a T section to carry a 300 kilo Newton tensile load and the mechanical properties are given and the flange is connected to the gazette plate on uh, one side by fillet wells and uh, uh, these are all the data given of course axial tensile force on the uh, T section is 300 kilo Newton 
design load is this much and again. So, since this is a design problem we are supposed to identify or select a suitable section to take that much of load. So, the first step is to assume the design stress. So, in this problem here it is assumed as 0 0.9 times of F y. So, the permissible design stress F T D is 270 Newton per millimeter square and the approximate grass area of the section required that is equal to this is the total design load in terms of Newton multiplied by this one this is for a conversion of kilo Newton into Newton and divided by the design tensile stress load by stress will give you the area. So, this is approximate area required and uh, from the steel tables based on this grass area and this section is selected that is ISNT 100 at 150 Newton per meter is selected and the geometrical properties of this section is taken from the steel table. So, grass area is 1910 millimeter square and D by H is 100 mm or D or H I am sorry it is not D by H it is D or H total depth or height of the section is 100 mm, B is equal to 100 mm, thickness of flange 10 and thickness of web 10 these are all the geometrical properties and having selected the section we have to check whether the section is suitable or not. So, the second step or third step is to find the design tensile strength of the member against yielding of grass area. So, yielding of grass area again the same old formula T D G is equal to A G into F I by gamma M naught substituting the relevant values the uh, uh, design tensile strength against yielding of grass area is found to be 520.91 kilo Newton and this is the second condition tensile strength against rupture of critical section T D N and T D N is equal to this is the expression to be used and A N C here denotes the area of uh, a net area of the connected leg and net area of the connected leg here is a flange. So, flange area is 100 into 10,000 millimeter square and the outstanding leg is nothing but the web. Since the thickness of web is included in the flange we have to deduct the thickness of the web here. So, the net area or grass area of the outstanding leg is found to be 900 millimeter square. Then this is the W value that is found to be 100 mm and T is equal to 10 mm and again shear lag distance is measured from the topmost edge of the outstanding flange to the connection that is found to be 145 mm that we can see from this sketch 145 mm this is 100 mm from this point to this point bottom most point is 100 mm from this here it is 50 and we have to detect because we have to measure the central central uh, distances. So, we have to detect the half of the th thickness. So, that comes around 100 plus 50 minus 5 145 mm and length of the end connection of course, it is length of the flange you can assume that. So, L c is equal to 100 mm substituting the relevant values the value of beta the factor is found to be 0.65 and the I think here yes a small mistake because the minimum value of beta is to be 0 0.7. So, there is a small correction here. So, even then it is a minor correction of course, there would not be much change in the design of uh, tensile strength against uh, rupture of critical section. So, here it is a same change. So, beta minimum is 0 0.7 we have to substitute 0 0.7 instead of 0 0.65 here and uh, the design tensile strength against rupture of critical section is found to be 476 kilo Newton and again the third condition this is the design tensile strength against block shear then that means the connection may fail member may be intact and gazette plate may be intact, but the connection may fail again 1 2 uh, in the diagram 1 2 shows the shear plane as well as 5 6 shows the shear plane. And the path along 2, 3, 4, 5 shows the tension plane. So, this path from 2 to 5 is a tension plane, from 1 to 2 as well as 5 to 6 is the shear plane. So, top horizontal and bottom horizontal are shear planes and the vertical left extreme vertical which is having the welding connection is uh, the tension plane. And the design tensile strength against a block shear of course, if you substitute this we will get the value of T D B as 600 kilo Newton in the first case that is shear yield and tension fracture 
and second one shear fracture tension yield. So, if you substitute the relevant values, you will end up with the design tensile strength against block shear 611. So, again among these two that is A and B, T D B A and T D B B, the least one is to be taken. So, this is 600.604 kilo Newton and the design tensile strength of the member is the least of all these three. So, the least is 476.345 kilo Newton and we have to compare this design tensile strength of the member with that of the design tensile load given in the problem. So, design tensile load given in the problem is 450 kilo Newton and the design tensile strength of the member or the selected member is 476.345 kilo Newton. Since this design tensile strength of the selected member is greater than the design tensile load, the section selected is safe and it can take that much of load. So, hence we can provide ISNT 100 at 150 Newton per meter. So, this should be the answer present. So, with this chapter 1 of uh, unit 5, of course, it is chapter 1.1, 1.2 is over. In fact, uh, chapter 1.5.1.1, 1 5.1.1 is introduction, 5.1.2 is the design of tension members and in design of tension members to summarize, we have uh, done two types of problems on design of tension member, one on the analysis part and the analysis means we will be asked to find out the design tensile strength of the member, we will be given the section and other parameters required and the second is we have to design actually design the member then that means design the sense so we have to find out the suitable section among the sections available. So, for that we will be given the load and the material properties namely F y and F u value. So, these two types of problems will be asked in the examination as well as in practical usage of course, these two types of uh, problems may occur. So, so uh, with that chapter 5.1.2 is over and we will proceed with uh, chapter 5.1.3 that deals with uh, steel compression members and by limit state method. And of course, we all know that the compression member when we say it carries compressive load and a compressive member which is carrying a axial compressive load and that is truly vertical then it, it is called as a stanchion. And if the member is uh, sloped or slant or at an inclination then that is to be called as a strut member. So, we will see the design of compression members in this chapter and again we are going to follow the provisions of IS code 800 2007 and the failure mode of the compression members are due to buckling. Because of their thin plate elements, they will buckle before they attain or be before they go in for a uh, yield stress. So, in general compression members may fail due to buckling rather than the crushing of material. And buckling of course, we have local buckling and in general buckling. Local buckling is due to wrinkleness in the bending of the elements. For an example, if you take uh, an I section, it consists of two plates one at the top as well as one at the bottom. Those two plates are called as flanges and the middle there in a vertical member and that is called as a web. All these three members are of uh, uh, smaller in thickness when compared to the other dimensions. So, all these smaller thickness members are susceptible of buckling when it is subjected to compressive loads. A buckling is nothing but the deflection and that deflection if it is due to flexure or bending then that is called a flexural buckling. That occurs that flexural failing occurs about the axis corresponding to the largest slenderness ratio. So, this uh, terminology slenderness ratio plays an important role in design of compression members. So, higher the slenderness ratio the failure is quick and lower the slenderness ratio it is safe. 
So, as far as the design of compression member are concerned, we must concentrate on slenderness ratio. Now, the second type of buckling, they may buckle because of twisting also and this twisting is called as torsional and if the torsional or if the deflection occurs because of twisting of the member, then that is called torsional buckling. Some compression members may fail due to the combination of deflection due to flexure as well as deflection due to torsion. So, those types of members are called as or those types of failures are called as flexural torsional buckling failure and see these are the failures of the compression members. Now, again the load carrying capacity of the compression member depends on all these types of failures as well as, as, well as the geometrical property namely the length and other properties plus supporting condition and IS 800 2000 suggests two methods one is on working stress and the second one is limit state method and nowadays as the code says limit state method is being followed and this chapter deals with the design of axially loaded compression members by limit state method only. And again if you want to design a compression member we are supposed to know the sections available in the market and the shapes of the sections available. So, the various uh, types of sections used as a compression member are single rolled sections probably it may be a 5 channel T angle or solid sections, hot rolled hollow rectangular or circular sections, built up sections, built up sections is a combination of uh, regular hot rolled sections made up of a single unit to act uh, as a single unit to take care of all the loads coming over it. And built up sections may be made up of uh, plates probably uh, an I section could be made up of a top one plate and bottom one plate and the middle one plate, top two plates are flanges and the middle one plate is a web. And also we can make a box section with the help of a thin plates and of course, these are all the images uh, um, to substantiate all these uh, things that is this is a single angle, this is T channel I section and this is solid rectangle circle etcetera. And of course, this you might have studied in the previous semester I mean previous uh, chapter when we deal with the design of uh, tension members. And again the parameter that we have to bear in your mind to design the compression member is its actual length and the effective length. Actual length is the length which is measured from the center to center of intersections of the supporting members that is all. From the beam center to the beam center, beam at top to the beam at bottom for the column member and the effective length is something which is uh, to be got from multiplying a factor k with that of the actual length. Effective length k l where k is the coefficient and l is the actual length. And the basic definition we must uh, I mean uh, know the uh, clear meaning of uh, effective length. And this is nothing but effective length of the compression member is that is that length which will give the same effect of the axially loaded compression member if it is subject to the same sort of loading then that which is hinged it is an imaginary member which is hinged. So, that will give you the same amount of effect. So, that is known as effective length of the compression member. The effective length of the compression member is the length of an equivalent member with the hinged ends having the same effect of buckling what I said in the previous thing is effect in the sense buckling. So, effective length of the compression member is the length of an equivalent member with the hinged ends having the same effect of buckling and of course, code in the code we can refer the tabular column 11 of IS 800 for the different end conditions and of course, all these uh, terminologies uh, we can understand. Translation and rotation. Translation in the sense it is the horizontal movement as well as the vertical movement. Rotation about the plane. So, if these two are restrained means in other words it is called as a fixed support and this is these two are free. Then one end fixed and the other end free the effective length is given as 2 L. Similarly, for all the end conditions the effective length we can take that from the tabular column. And for the effective length of other members what we have seen in the tabular column is for prismatic members 
and this is for struts and braced frames and for single members and for double angle discontinuous members and continuous members and all those things uh, we can calculate the effective length by using the coefficients given in this paragraph. And the other important parameter for the design of a compression member is slenderness ratio lambda and it is nothing but the ratio between the effective length and the appropriate radius of gyration. And for steel structures since we are not having a regular shape radius of gyration plays an important role in value of slenderness ratio. Radius of as the radius of gyration decreases the slenderness ratio will get increased obviously the load carrying capacity of the member will get decreased. If the radius of gyration is increased then slenderness ratio is decreased obviously the load carrying capacity of the member is increased. So, we must remember this parameter slenderness ratio and the slenderness ratio is denoted by letter lambda and which is given by k l by r where k l is the effective length of the member and r is the radius of gyration about the axis which is concerned. And k l of course, we have to refer the table for getting the value and r again we have to refer the tabular column I mean steel tables to get the value of a radius of gyration for the corresponding member. So, to summarize uh, for uh, design of compression members uh, we have seen the definition for compression member and the uh, uh, types of sections that are to be used in the compression member and the parameters that involves uh, for the failure of a compression member and the different terminologies flexural buckling then local buckling flexural torsional buckling etcetera and the actual length effective length and uh, the final stage we have seen value for the slenderness ratio the important factor slenderness ratio how to find the value for a uh, value of a slenderness ratio. So, with this this session is over thank you.